my channel. This video is going to be a response video where I have a look through some of your comments. Um, I won't be able to get through all of your comments, so apologies if I haven't included your comment. Um, but I have looked at them all and appreciate all your comments. Um, but I just wanted to um, just look through some of the comments that I felt I could mo could answer the most of that. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about and bring to your attention. Obviously, I'll keep it all anonymous because I appreciate you might not want your name, your um, YouTube name, you know, set out. So I will keep who wrote each comment anonymous. Obviously, if you want to go and have a look through the comments to see who's written them, you know, go ahead. Um, there's some very good comments there. So I just wanted to, yeah, just um, go through some of your comments. Um, so... Yeah, so in relation to what I was talking about um, to do with the social worker um, meeting I had the other day and um, the idea that support is there to sort of help you to become more independent with the idea that it's to help you sort of acquiring skills um, which is this idea almost that they're not there to help, they're not there to do things for you, but to help you to become more independent, which can be actually quite ableist um, when it's, it, if someone literally cannot do something um, because they're made to feel bad just for saying that. And, um, you know, if someone literally cannot do something, no amount of support to help them to acquire that skill is going to work because they, they're part of their disability is they literally cannot do it and they need someone to do it for them, or otherwise it won't get done, or it won't get done to satisfactory enough standard, and they'll still basically could pose a sort of health and safety risk, essentially, because part of their disability is they literally need someone to do it for them, and when they say, oh yeah, we need to help you to become all independent and everything, that can overlook <clears throat> some people's actual needs, which is kind of discrimination. So one of you replied and said, it's as if there is an unspoken assumption, our difficulties are our own fault, and if we tried harder, we would not be disabled. I thought that was very well put. Yeah. You know, just try harder. You will acquire the skills. You won't need support anymore. Hurrah, we've cured you. You're no longer disabled. We can save money that way, can't we? Cut, cut, cut services. Because that's kind of... I mean, it's not really a very well hidden secret, is it? For that's what they essentially are trying to do is to cut corners it's all ideology so yeah i thought that was really well put um another one of you who's obviously who's from the usa um so there's a similar issue in the us where people are being pushed towards self-directed service models some state some state uh, this saves the state money and that's the only thing they care about yeah exactly um so this seems to be like a cross-national thing, obviously not just in the UK. Um, I have a feel. I'm not sure if it began in America or in the USA more specifically, because it it wouldn't surprise me if this did begin as a USA thing, because a lot of these kind of free market things do seem to begin in the USA and then unfortunately get imported into the UK, which is quite influenced by the American way of doing things now, to the extent that our welfare state is being increasingly eroded, because it's... I really sympathise for people in in the USA who don't have that kind of comprehensive welfare state. Um, and, yeah, and um, obviously it must be even harder to get services um, if you don't have insurance in, in America. Um, whereas obviously in the UK there is this supposedly a comprehensive welfare state which was set up after the Second World War but this is increasingly being um, eroded as, like, American models are sort of being imported, but it's like a sort of free market capitalism, which is invading um, spaces that used not to be... Uh, spaces that used to be sort of sacrosanct that weren't seen as, like, capitalism should not touch them, but now this is, like... Even the NHS is being... Um, corrupted by capitalist free market um so yeah so it seems to be that maybe your self-directed service model was imported from america i'm not it wouldn't surprise me but it'd be interesting to know if um 
other countries also have are, are undergoing a sort of Americanisation, I guess, um, in the, in the way they deliver services. Um, I'm not too sure how they do it in Scandinavian countries, which are see, usually seen as more progressive um, in their way of doing things um, and less Americanised. But I think things might be changing over there as well. I'm not too sure. And then another one of you commented by saying that. Um, that you hate all of the bureaucracy involved with getting benefits. It's like they want the people who actually need benefits to not be able to get them. Yet, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, that's it. They don't say it, but it's true. Um, they make it fiendishly difficult to access benefits. The very people who need them, who are like very disabled um, by nature if you're very disabled be it mentally or physically you are not going to be in the best place to be able to fill out forms and for some people their very disability in and of itself makes filling out forms sometimes even impossible um, in my case I can't fill out benefit forms because they literally trigger extreme meltdown like it's paralysis I literally cannot do it and again this can sometimes be misconstrued by well-meaning service people providers who sort of think that oh have you only tried hard enough oh it's a question of attitude oh you can do it which is really patronizing and <laughs> um shows how little they understand disability um it's got nothing to do with willpower, it's got nothing to do with being lazy, it's got nothing to do with that. This is 100% part of my autism, it's an executive functioning impairment, it's neurological, it's not something I can help, it's not something I can turn on or off, it's beyond my control. I wish I could fill out the forms because hell, it would make my life so much easier. Because seriously, you don't want to be in a position where you can't fill out the forms and then maybe not get the money you're entitled to and to be dependent on other people like that is not nice. So, but that's the reality. So I need someone else to do it for me, or it doesn't get done. Um, currently my dad fills out all of my uh, disability forms for me. Um, when he's no longer here, my brother should be able to do it for me. I am worried about what will happen exactly in the handover. Um, obviously, even actually when he's still here, but no longer there'll be a point, obviously, you know, very old people, might, he might not be able to do that when he's very old. He might not have the cognitive capacity or whatever, we don't know. Um, so then, you know, yeah, my brother will have to do it. Um, I did speak to a social worker about that the other day about other options and he mentioned, because I said, you know, couldn't I spend my direct payments on um, a disability solicitor because there's one who's just up the road from me who I know would be able to fill them out really well because he's trained in that sort of thing and I'd have the assurance then that they'd be taken care of without the risk of having to go to tribunal because thankfully I haven't had to go to tribunal I did have to go to tribunal the first time I applied and I think that's pretty standard um, it's almost like it's a rite of passage my parents dealt with that because I wouldn't be able to deal with that um, but since then it's just been straightforward because it's the same old evidence that's given every time personally I really don't I really hate I know one of you asked a long time ago, and I know I said I was going to do a bit proper video on it, and I just haven't got around to it, but I know one of you asked, like, what what sort of things would, would I like to happen in society to make life easier for disabled or autistic people? And one massive thing would be to stop constantly reassessing people for social security, because autism and many other disabilities are lifelong, and if you've already been assessed as someone who cannot work and will never be able to work, and that's basically not never going to be a realistic prospect, like ever. And you've got all of the evidence, you've already been assessed, they've so seen the evidence, it's not going to change, it's not a condition that can get better over time, it's not a condition that you can be recovered from. Then you should not, if you have one of those type of disabilities, then you should not be constantly reassessed. It wastes money, which could be better spent elsewhere, it's a massive waste of money and time and energy and just causes needless stress for people who are already struggling. And yeah, so I just don't understand that. And that's another reason why I say 
I don't think society, I think society, or at least the powers of be, hates disabled people because every thing they do is trying to make disabled people's lives even harder than they already are. Like, as if we don't have enough stress in our lives already, taken over by our condition, we shouldn't have to deal with this as well. It's like an extra stress. So, yeah. And you, and you also said in the comments, um, you also said that most laziness, in inverted commas, because that's a whole, it's not really a very nice word, laziness, is it? So laziness in inverted commas. Most laziness seems to just be the result of mental health issues. Yeah, I agree. People often, when people use the word lazy as a kind of judgment, no one chooses to be lazy, right? Because, like, if you think about it, part of a human condition is to be active, is to be doing things, is to be enjoying, you know, part of our human condition, we're meaning makers. That's what we want to do. So if someone, if someone appears to be, in inverted commas, lazy, which is a derogatory, judgmental term used by other people to smear someone, really, um, there's usually a jolly good reason for it. It might be mental health problems. So if someone is depressed or extremely anxious, it's going to be very hard for them to be motivated to do stuff. Someone else might judge them then as being lazy, particularly if they have a type of mental health problem that isn't apparently obvious. Oh, it must be their choice if someone chooses, you know, to live like that. Because normally, in normal situations, people don't choose to live like that. There might be a very, very small minority of people, maybe. But again, the question is whether even A might have some condition, you know? Because it's kind of not normal for someone to be completely demotivated unless they have some kind of uh, mental health problem. So, because <laughs> we're, you know, part of human condition is to be meaning makers, you know? That's, so if someone does appear to be lazy, yeah, like, go, oh, I've got a mental health problem. Um, maybe go in, maybe go in other, maybe something else is going on in their life. Um, you know, again, might get a whole range of different things, psychological problems, um, relationship problems. Um, there's going to be a problem somewhere and blaming them just isn't helpful. Um, and that just encourages them not to seek help and stuff. Um, so yeah, we should really kind of try and think twice before using that word to judge someone, particularly when... Well, we should also think twice because the likelihood is that in some areas we too are, in effect, commas, lazy. Because I d bet there's not a single person on this planet who at some times is demotivated in something or other. Um, so yeah, maybe you should, people should not throw stones before analysing their own selves. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, people are too quick to use the lazy smear. Um... Okay, I'm going to move over to the video number two now to uh, carry on uh, discussing your comments. So, moving over to video number two now.